I'll be speaking on an important topic which is known as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Many of you will know that this has earlier been known as a benign intracranial hypertension. There is a change in nomenclature now and this is a syndrome of raised intracranial pressure and it's usually idiopathic that is why it is known as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This commonly occurs in female especially the obese person and of childbearing age. This can produce headache and visual disturbance. Earlier though it was known as benign intracranial hypertension. Subsequently since there was a risk of visual loss it was no longer considered benign and so the word has been removed and replaced by idiopathic intracranial hypertension and it is important to diagnose early to preserve vision and in, so you have to intervene early in the course of the disease. So what causes the uh, intracranial hypertension? Can be many things like venous drainage obstruction, endocrine disorders, infectious or post-infectious medical conditions. Venous drainage obstruction is cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, it can be septic or aseptic. Whenever there is a jugular vein obstruction also it can produce superior vena cavella obstruction and increased right heart pressure can all produce IIH. Apart from Addison's hypothyroidism, obesity, infections is HIV, Lyme's. Medical condition you can see is polycystic ovarian syndrome, sarcoids, obstructive sleep apnea, SLE can all be uh, manifesting as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And you have a big list of drugs which can produce intra idiopathic intracranial hypertension, especially this vitamin A related compounds. Lots of times people will come and tell us that we are taking this uh, thing, uh, pearl like tablets, vitamin A and uh, that is one of the causes especially excess of vitamin A can produce idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Sometimes even uh, oral contraceptives and te earlier tetracyclines used to be, nowadays we do not get much tetracyclines, uh, hormones also can produce apart from lithium nalidic, nalidic acid and amiodarone. These are some of the common drugs which can produce idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So whenever a patient presents with headache and visual disturbance, you also have to ask the drug history. So what are the symptoms? These seven symptoms are the common ones. It is headache tops the list with 94% of them presenting with headache. Transient with visual obscurations can occur. Sometimes they have a pulse synchronous tinnitus. They keep telling the tap, 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 tap. The noise is also coming along with my pulse. Photopsia can be there. Then retro orbital or retro ocular pain can be there. Then sometimes they have diplopia and visual loss. That is much less compared to headache and transient vis visual obscurations, which should make you suspect the diagnosis of hypertension, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This headache is very similar to that of the migraine or the tension type headaches but certain features may be common and certain are not common. Here usually headache is moderate to severe in intensity, frontal or retroocular in location. It is associated with nausea, vomiting, mimicking migraine but daily occurrence is not required for the diagnosis of IAH. Some have had super added migraine also sometimes so these patients are on treatment for migraine. And some of them complain in addition to headache, some pain, back pain and neck pain and they can keep doing these movements because of the pain. So you can have transient visual obscurations and this occurs in about majority of the patients, 70% of them. They are usually intermittent, very short lasting. They are followed by complete recovery. Sometimes they find suddenly the vision is gone and back. In that episode, each episode will last only for about 20 to 30 seconds. It can occur in one eye or both the eyes. This is thought to occur because of the ischemia of the optic nerve because of increased in intracranial pressure and in addition papilledema, disc edema also can produce some visual symptoms. As I said, this tinnitus occurs in 60 to 65 percent of the patients, usually unilateral, usually produces a whooshing sound whoosh, 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 like that. Hearing loss may be present. This is because of the transmitted pulsation of the blood vessels via CSF and high pressure to the wall of the venous sinuses which are in very close contact with the mast mastoid region and convert the uh, uh, laminar flow to a turbulent one. Ipsilateral jugular vein compression or lumbar puncture will help in relieving the tinnitus. Maybe because of the endolymphatic duct pressure also, the sensation to the uh, membranous labyrinth is affected and produces tinnitus. We have seen about visual obscurations. Coming to visual loss, one fourth of the patients can have mild visual loss and may not even be aware of it except when you are doing a field test. There can be a blind spot enlargement occur and they can also have defects in the inferior nasal portion of the field and in the peripheral constriction can be present. Reduction in the field can be progressive if it is not treated and can lead to total blindness. This visual loss is usually gradual but in severe cases rapid decrease can occur also and central vision loss is very uncommon. Usually the peripheral vision loss is much more common.